Now then, when that basalt goes down a subduction zone, let's take the minerals over here and see what happens to it as it goes down a subduction zone. The olivine, pyroxene, and plagioclase. Without going into detail, what happens then is that sodium and potassium are released from these constituents, constituent minerals, and some aluminum and some silica. These are released as the basalt begins to go down a subduction zone, either beneath a continent or beneath another piece of ocean lithosphere. The rock that's then produced is andesite, composed of plagioclase. Let's take these away. Plagioclase and amphibole, essentially. So what we've seen, then, is we've seen a sort of a one-way street. The creation of oceanic lithosphere by the partial melting of the asthenosphere, producing basalt, and the reprocessing of that basalt to produce andesite, andesite of the volcanic island arcs, or the volcanoes on the margin of a continent. That andesite is this rock. And as well as being light-colored, it's light in weight. And it never sinks again down a subduction zone. Once it's formed as land, it remains land. And looking at that pattern of volcanic activity and, well, volcanic activity at spreading ridges and volcanic activity at subduction zones gives us some hints as to why and how those plates of oceanic lithosphere might move. We get some hints as to the mechanism of plate tectonics. Hot material at the spreading ridges formed into the oceanic lithospheric plates, cooling as it moves away from the, um, <clears throat> the splitting ridge to the margins of continents, or descending down a subduction zone here. Cooling and getting heavier, and perhaps sinking down this subduction zone because it's heavy, but perhaps because it's part of a convection system, getting hotter here, melting, hot, cool, hot, cool, and so on. Part of a convection system like that. That's a second possibility, that the lithosphere is, in fact, a part of a convection so system involving the asthenosphere. Perhaps also the plates move because hot material is squeezed up into here in gaps, pushing those plates apart. Whichever mechanism it is, the oceans are, if you like, the factory for the production of the continents.